perfect. Well, yeah, so we brought a one of one little rework bit for you. Okay. So we thought we'd give it to you, have a look, have a chat through things. Yeah. And yeah, very, very chilled out. So I'm actually very excited. Good. I don't get many presents nowadays, so see what I did. Then oh. start chatting through. Well, straight bits. away, I can see the Man City and the England badge. So that is so cool. And it is an apron for the shop. I need one of these, to be honest, even though I'm, I'm usually on dishes duty. So, yeah. oh, this is actually so cool. So the name of the coffee shop, which is the most important. Oh, this is actually so cool. So I guess, I guess kind of like... To start, what really, what first like takes your eye? So the Bold and Girls badge, mm. that was where I started off when I was eight, nine year old. It takes us back to being mm -hmm. a little girl waiting for a lift at the, the top of my street um, to get a lift to football. Just absolutely love them times. Yeah, that is my earliest memories of yeah. football. So that badge always holds a, a special place in my heart. Because with like growing up, like when you get into it, how was that? Because when obviously you train with the boys and you're not allowed to. Like, how was that transition and getting into football for you? Because you were a runner at first, weren't you? Yeah, so I think I think Bolden Girls was the place where I kind of realised that there was more people like me mm -hmm. because I'd been playing for full wool boys and was the only girl and I loved it. And the boys were nice to us because mm -hmm. they knew I could play a little bit. But I think when I went to Bolden, that was where I like kind of discovered my identity a little bit. And I didn't feel like I was the only one, like that mm -hmm. was a girl. So there's some really happy memories of, of that club. Because it was, was it, you were doing long distance running, then was it between that and football and you had to switch? Because what was it about football that you kind of like, yeah. led you on to it? So basically football was my first love. Mm -hmm. But then when I went to senior school, if you do one sport, yeah. you end up doing everything. Mm -hmm. And I realised that I was pretty good at running some someone from Sunderland Harriers was like, oh, will you come and do some races for us? And I was only 12 years old and I think I won this cross country race by about 25 seconds, mm -hmm. which is a lot in cross country mm -hmm. terms. But I always said that when I won, it was a bit of like an empty feeling. Yeah. Whereas when you win with a team, mm -hmm. everyone said happy. We used to go in the little clubhouse and treat ourselves to a bag of sweets and a kind of fizzy pop. And I think when I used to win on my own, I'd just be like, yeah, I've won and then like go yeah. home so it was definitely the I think I'm definitely born to be part of a mm -hmm. team I think female friendships are a bit different to men's in that they're just very tight and intense yeah yeah and I think to be honest coming out of football that's definitely been the thing mm. that has meant the most to us the friends that I've got when mm -hmm. I've stepped out of it like work now is pretty busy but the fact that I can just phone someone up if I'm in London, one of my ex-teammates, and say, can we go for a coffee? Mm -hmm. Or if I'm in Manchester, obviously the football memories and looking at this is a lot of, there's a Euros trophy, mm -hmm. a lot of memories. But I think the friendships that you make always mean the most. How I am off the pitch to how I was on the pitch mm. is completely different. So I was very passionate when I stepped mm. over that white line. I don't shy away from the fact that I was never one of the most technically mm. gifted players or most talented. But I think my work rate and work ethic, I was always like, I think I was quite good at stopping the good players from mm. playing. That's how I would kind yeah. of describe my game. So I'd like to think if anybody was coming up against us, they'd know that they were going to be in for a tough game. Before like a game, how is it? That you get into that mindset because it's not one obviously when you switch on but do you have to like prepare for it or do you just go in for it I think because I've always loved the game of football I was always prepared and I used to train very hard as well so I felt like when I stepped over that white line I was prepared I knew my job mm. I knew my role and I think that was probably a big part of it I, I knew what I couldn't do but I knew what I could do mm. if I suddenly was thinking oh I'm going to go on this pitch and run like Lauren Hemp or be as technical as Kiwa mm. Walsh. I would never have been able mm. to do it. So I think like any job, if you can go into it, knowing what you bring to the mm -hmm. team, that kind of gives us that confident, uh, confidence element to go and support. Because we, uh, we popped on a little, so we actually, it's a little, we did a little caravan because Remy said that like in terms of family, you and your grandma were like, like yeah. inside the caravan holiday. So what was like in terms of getting into it family for you? Yeah, so the caravan represents probably all my childhood holidays, mm -hmm. but then also the holidays that I still have now. So mm -hmm. I've always gone to the same caravan park, mm -hmm. Blue Dolphin at Scarborough. And I kind of have a little bit of a joke that after the Euros, the girls went to Ibiza and I ended up in this caravan <laughs> with my family. What else have we got on here? She's big, she's blue, she's coming for you. That is my Manchester City song mm -hmm. that the fans um, made for me. And you know what? The Man City fans are still 
so special to mm -hmm. me. They come in the coffee shop and will still support me as well. But yeah, they've kind of been there from the start, especially when I signed for Man City. Mm -hmm. I was I was 26 and it's nice now that they'll still come into the shop mm -hmm. and they're very, very dedicated to the club. They do a lot of work for the women's team. So it's always quite nice when you're playing and suddenly you hear, you hear your mm -hmm. song being sung. I'm like, oh, I must have put in a good tackle or something like that. Yeah, seeing that song just makes us smile, really, because when I was playing and I could hear that being sung, mm -hmm. she's big, she's blue, she's coming for you. Um, it would just make us smile a little yeah. bit. It's the fans around that are kind of pushing everything on, like without fans. Like, we always say it worked out like football's nothing without the fans, but that yeah. kind of support is so integral to, you know, on the pitch, but also like feeling comfortable off the pitch and knowing that like you're in the right thing. Yeah, and I think that's a story with the Man City Women's like Supporters Club. They were coming when we probably had 200 people at the game. And now I see that they get thousands of people. They're still in the centre. Mm -hmm. They're still at the core of it. And I know that their supporters club's probably gone from just a few members mm -hmm. to kind of there being a waiting list for people mm -hmm. to get in. So it's nice to see that the supporters groups has grown mm -hmm. along with the fan numbers, along with the game as well. And it's just, it's just great that the women's game's in a better place. Mm -hmm. And I look back on all these memories and it just kind of makes us happy that I've retired because I'm at peace with that, knowing mm. that the game's in a better place. Yeah. There was this little uh, letter going around saying, hello, can my daughter stay off school today because she wants to watch England mm -hmm. women's team play in the World Cup? And that's when I was like, wow, this has got like quite big. So I think the support will still be there. Mm -hmm. I know some of the kickoff times are early in the yeah. morning, but I think there'll be kids getting out of bed early. If there's anything that can get a child out of bed early, it's to watch a lioness yeah. in the World Cup. From an outside perspective, like with you being on like, I'm a Celeb, it's clear that like women's football is becoming way more into pop culture. Yeah. So how would how did that kind of influence things that people see uh, as kind of yeah footballer, but also just like a general <laughs> like like face on the screen? Yeah. Now? Yeah, I'm a celebrity. Um, the thing I, I quite liked about it was that if I meet people now, I feel like they kind of know my personality mm. and they've probably yeah. got to know us a little bit more as mm -hmm. a person. And I like that because I, I like chatting to people and I do my own podcast. Mm -hmm. And the reason I started my own podcast was because I wanted people to get to know the person behind the players. Mm -hmm. Because if people just judge me for on the pitch, i.e. F off you, F and whatever, mm -hmm. then people would probably think I was absolutely mental and mad. But I think when you get to know people, yeah. they can be completely different. So I hope the jungle got to see that fun side of me. I, I met up with one of my ex-teammate the other day and she said you know what watching you in the jungle was just everybody getting an insight into how you mm -hmm. were on England camp so I'd like to think I'd, I'd try to bring fun try to get people kind of together and chatting because when you're on camp you can be away for six weeks yeah. and miss family people have got things going on at home mm. some people have got kids back home that they're not getting to see say that again. um yeah people have stuff going on away from football and I think you need to come together as a team to help people get through their moments so I've always been big on off the pitch stuff and hopefully the jungle showed that side of me um I've just seen something recently with Leah um obviously chatting to the cricket girls and stuff mm -hmm. like that and the mindset is is very the same and I'd like to think that the Euros win going back mm -hmm. to the Euros trophy did it was good for women's sport as mm -hmm. well as yeah. women's football so there's a lot of successful female athletes out there growing up I didn't really mm -hmm. have female yeah. role models because football wasn't at the level mm -hmm. that we speak about but the likes of Paula Ratcliffe, Kelly Holmes mm -hmm. like they're a very inspirational female athletes to mm -hmm. me so I think if we all work together the world can just be a better place mm -hmm. really. These are my tattoos as mm -hmm. well step by step day by day mile by mile so mm -hmm. I have that one I, I got that 2009 before the Euros when we actually played Germany in the mm -hmm. final and we got beat in that final so yeah, I'd, I think this tattoo, though, really does represent kind of how I've lived my life. Like, I never think too far ahead, mm -hmm. just working hard every single day, step by step, day by day, and then obviously the mile by mile, the legs have run a lot of miles. Yeah. So it's a good job I don't have a mileage because <laughs> I'd be in the scrapyard, I think. Like, when it comes to the lionesses and thinking about the lionesses, what are three words that come to mind? Oh, fierce, I would say, yeah, I think... Fierce just because everybody is kind of at it and they want to win and, yeah, they're definitely fierce. I think honest. Mm -hmm. I think within the group, 
if you kind of speak to the girls, they're very honest people, very good people. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd have to say winners. And that's not even going off the Euros trophy, I think within the squad, the competitiveness, even in the training and the little five-a-side games mm -hmm. that are meant to be fun at the end of training, everybody wants to win. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say my three words for the Lionesses are honest, fierce and winners. Perfect. Ah. Or honest, fierce winners. <laughs> Perfect. That's a great three words. There you go. That's a great three words. There you go.